that she has under her belt in season. So we will see how the two pair up. North Carolina coming in red hot playing at home as they start off with the ball. This is a team that has won eight of their last nine, currently on a three-game win streak. And as we mentioned, playing well at home on a six-game win streak here at Carmichael Arena. It's interesting, Miami starting out in a little bit of a zone, a matchup zone, leaving Renan Kelly open in the three, and she knocks it down. And how fitting for you to talk about Renaya Kelly coming in as a freshman. Doesn't play like one. She's really getting comfortable in that point guard role. That is the hardest position to trans transition into. Maybe I might be a little bit biased, but I will <laughs> say it is very, very hard to command a team, especially as a freshman. I mean, she's commanding respect from her teammates. Got the deflection at the top of the key. A short shot clock as Day Wilson has some decisions to make. Sends it off. Jasmine Roberts pulls up baseline, gets it to drop. I like her aggressiveness in that NC State game and starting off right where she left off. Deja Kelly held up, as you mentioned. We're seeing the hurricane starting off in more of a zone. Slow down the Tar Heels a little bit as Gok Dang gets it on the inside, completely hovered, and a short shot clock for the Tar Heels this trip down the floor. Four, Gok Dang sends it back out. Kelly, long three, back iron. Renaya Kelly able to pull this one out for an O'Board. Let's be going against Jada Patrick. Able to pull up, draws the foul. She'll get two at the free throw line. And she was really poised in that possession, getting the ball at the post position and just surveying the floor a little bit, seeing if a double was coming, really seeing if Miami was going to double, if they're going to dig. Nice poised move right there. Kyla Olaker picks up the foul there. I think one of the most impressive things that you we talked about the offense for both sides, right? We talked about how it was done by committee and Miami's win over uh, NC State and then also with North Carolina. But these are two very good defensive teams as well as they are number one and two in scoring defense. There's going to be a little bit of a chess match <laughs> of how you score against these defenses. on both sides. Roberts, top of the key tray. Must be able to track that one down. Gokte left all alone, able to get it in the open floor and finishes. Yeah, I love Usby's ability to push in transition and Gokte just running the floor. Alyssa Usby actually averages close to four assists a game. And when you look at it, what she's able to do, standing at 6-1, she's just one of those Swiss Army knives for North Carolina. It's always great when you're able to get the rebound and just run. No need for an outlet. Doc Dang running down the floor and hit the target on time. Early four-point lead for the Tar Heels as Zanarski has the ball up top. Had the first 10 points for the Tar Heels in their previous game as another trade. Confusing sometimes, no? That's <laughs> <laughs> her first initial. And Kelly on the back of her jersey. Spin move on the inside by Kyla is able to draw the foul. Nice move. Getting to her, the block. Yeah, I, I really, I really like that. A little two dribble and then a nice little spin move. A, a, a good look here. She's hit another one from the opposite corner. So she was like, let me run the baseline and knock down another one. from the charity stripe this season, just shooting 55% from the free throw line. The sophomore out of Mason, Ohio, able to knock down the second. We're seeing a little bit of full court pressure by Day Wilson a little bit, trying to disrupt in the backcourt. It's a perfect word, disrupt the flow of the Tar Heels as Donarski rattles that one in. the Tar Heels from outside early three for four and that's a good sign they haven't even they barely hit the paint thus far Dave Wilson we see you as she knocks down a 
tray of her own. That is her 100th career three-pointer. Gets the steal on the other end, and here come the Hurricanes. Julia Williams pulls up on the inside, and a nice bucket for the mid-range. That's always key when you're coming in transition of that secondary action. Everybody is flowing. If you have great spacing, it's a great opportunity for these guards to really attack inside the paint. Tar Heels have made the last three buckets on this end. SB held up, left hand, couldn't get that one to drop in. Jasmine Roberts working the baseline, couldn't knock it down, and it will go back to the Tar Heels. But I love her aggressiveness in transition, able to get the step, is what, what, like a little Euro step in front of the rim and wasn't able to knock it down, but I love the aggressiveness. A couple of substitutions coming in for Miami as Lazaria Spearman checks in. You mentioned just, there is no drop off on the bench. Highest scoring bench in the ACC. You mentioned against NC State, they outscored their bench 28 to zero. Not only were they scoring, but they're able to get stops defensively a really, against a really good NC State team. Donarski off the bounce, tried to use the glass. The foot on the sideline on that take for Leah Williams, that was actually something that we saw Turo Coleman telling her squad earlier today at shoot around. Just make sure you're aware of where your foot is on that sideline because a couple of the players did that earlier today. Yeah, I mean, you want to try to have good spacing, right? You don't, you never want to start creeping into the inside that three-point line. You just have to be aware of your surroundings. The gamble to no avail, so a bucket for Donarski. That puts her at five. To the halfway point of this first quarter, Jada Patrick was begging for the ball in the corner. Nice rebound by Roberts, took the bump, and actually they're gonna call a travel there. So that will be the first turnover for Miami. The third turnover by Miami. This will bring us to our first media break. So to start, Carolina shooting red high from outside as the lead, 14-8 over Miami. As we saw and talked about a couple of the upsets coming into this one with Carolina as well as Miami, but how about Duke taking down Virginia Tech and Virginia getting their first win in league play over Florida State and Florida State You've seen brighter days in Tallahassee dropping their game tonight against Duke by over 40 points. And the ACC is so competitive. It's hard to get a win wherever you're at. Whether it's a home game or wherever you're playing, home game or away, it's really, really hard to get a win in ACC play. Well, how about going back to North Carolina when they were the national team of the week? They were just really firing on all cylinders, took down two ranked opponents as well. They were dropped out of the rankings for a week um, and now back in the top 20 as well. But now Duke pretty much doing the same thing, taking down Virginia Tech. Now Georgia Amor didn't play a majority of that second half. But also now going down to Tallahassee on the road and then, or actually at home, excuse me, and then winning that game as well. It's being done by committee, right? It's not just one person. Everybody is getting involved and, and getting things done on both ends of the floor. And you have to kind of stay steady. It's not going to be a one game. You're, you're not going to win the league with one game. And so you, you take it game by game, section by section, and, and try to get some wins. Short shot clock for Miami. The take on the side by Spearman. Was able to get her own rebound, but couldn't finish the play. Deja Kelly. I love her pull-up jumper, especially in transition at the elbow. Operates so well in that tunnel area. First points of the ball game for Deja Kelly. Right now, Naya Kelly leading the way with six. That's off the fingertips of Jasmine Roberts. So another turnover, which will be the fourth for Miami. 
Jay Dwyer will check in for Miami. And just more of a rotation thing for Coach Meyer. Talked about how Dwyer was starting the majority of the season, didn't start the last now five games. And just talked about the different sense of pace and push that they needed on the offensive end coming off the bench. It's a different look. I mean, we talked about it against NC State. 28 to 0, and she was a huge piece in that component. So nothing really drops off when she comes into the game. And that's what coach, if you're a coach, that could be a great surprise when you're subbing into the ball game and the energy level goes up. Hey Wilson off the bounce was held up with Gautain standing with her hands straight up in the air. Trying to make anyone turn around. Dwyer looking for some relief, a lot of pressure. Look where Miami is running their offense. Almost a half court, three on the shot clock. Dwyer outside. And a foul against Carolina. Jada Patrick was flying in for the rebound. Network. Our women's basketball doubleheader includes two rivalry matchups. Virginia Tech hosts Virginia at 6 Eastern, then at 8. North Carolina heads to Raleigh to take on NC State. Not a long trip at all, just down the road, so looking forward to catching both of those as there's a foul on the play. We'll see where this is going to go against. Looks like it's going to go against Miami. The officials gather together just to discuss they're on the same page. Tierra Cruz, Bruce Morris, and Safe Esho on the call for tonight. And actually, they're going to reverse it. So there was a little bit of miscommunication of who that was against. Crash on the board here. Oh, that's a tough call. Whenever you're boxing out, somebody's in the air. You see that a lot when guards are post or boxing out post players. So an offensive foul will give it back to the Tar Heels, but Deja Kelly picked up that previous one. So Tar Heels couple ticks off the shot or the game clock and get it back. Natasha Lattimore checks in, as well as Jasmine, Jasmine Roberts. Kelly, as you mentioned, just the transition to really excelling on the high school level, coming over to a Power 5 school in Carolina and trying to take care of business, leading the floor as Lexi Donarski, the transfer from Iowa State, able to knock that one down and now has seven points to lead the way for the Tar Heels. They're shooting and being super efficient on the offensive end, shooting 75% from the three-point line, 19 to 8 with this timeout. The 7-0 run, all of their starters have scored, and here is a nice off-the-bounce look for Donarski. Yeah, when you're a shooter, a lot of times they try to run you off the line, and you get the opportunity to have those easy drives into the lane, she took advantage of it. You know what, I love the, the story on how Lexi Donarski found a home here in Chapel Hill. Courtney Banghart said she actually had to slide in the DMs to make sure that she was available, like, hey, you want to be a Tar Heel? And uh, it seems like everything has worked out since then. Roberts tried to go around Donarski, and that's another thing. Donarski isn't just known for being a shooter, but a great defender as well. Coach Bankart talked about that, a shoot around, her ability to guard the basketball one-on-one -on -one and stop her opponent. So a lot of contact. We're looking at that matchup right now with Jasmine Robertson. Deja Kelly, it's very physical with them right now on the baseline. Well, they're going a little bit back and forth. She was trying to play one-on-one -on -one defense. Maybe got away with a push-off earlier in the possession, but the refs oftentimes see the second person that commits the foul. Most times. Yep. It happens. On your pool. Blocked at the rim. Tasha Lattimore. You to get the block there and a blocking call. Still keep it with Miami as India Navarre checks in the game for the Tar Heels. 
So Melissa Usby picks up the foul there. Miami in a bit of a drought. They've been over on their last six trips down the floor. Have not scored in about five minutes of play as we're 63 seconds away from the first quarter coming to a close. As she was penetrating the lane, I would have liked to see a little kick to the three-point shot. They were helping on that nail. She drove a little bit deep, tried to have that drop-off pass to the post player. See both teams have almost switched up more out of that zone, too, into man-to-man uh, -man as the outside shot doesn't go down for Hilton. Deja Kelly garnering a lot of attention coming down the floor. Everyone understands how dangerous she is in mid-range. Ten on the shot clock. Denarski had a nice look on the flare. Instead, it's a turnover for the Tar Heels. They have numbers. Lattimore at the rim, trying to hesitate. So a nice defensive look for Navarre, who ran under Lattimore to prevent the layup. Just try to make the looks difficult. That's what it's all about when you're playing defense. You're not going to stop an opponent all the way, so he's making their, diff their looks be as difficult as possible. Five on the game clock. Kelly found some space on the baseline. the lane, have a nice little escape dribble into a fadeaway jumper. That's a nice hand one. The focus, the poise by Deja Kelly in these last four games. Somewhat of a slow start in the first quarter, but we know what she can get cooking. Real fast. <laughs> 1.7 left. Williams tries a full court heave. Nothing there, so that will bring the first quarter to a close in Carolina has been able to knock down really good looks in the first. Right now, a six. Right now, playing as well against LSU. So that's one thing that the Tar Heels have going for them. Miami, on the other end, have not had a good start, shooting just 25% from the field. It was very interesting, our conversation with Coach Meyer. She said, hey, yeah, we got rest, but so did NC State when they came in to play us, and they did not look like they were in rhythm. Miami right now looking for that rim rhythm after their break. Yeah, Miami struggling on the offensive end. Six turnovers in that first quarter. It's hard to find a rhythm when you're going, when you're giving the ball right back to the Tar Heels. A couple attempts at the rim for Carolina. But the foul is going to go against Miami. So this one will go against Latasha Lattimore. It's going to be her first. So when you know you have those slumps, you did talk about the rhythm, you talked about the turnovers as well. What more can you see of Deja Kelly? Wow. Wow. Another and one. Yeah, I'm a little confused by Miami. You never really want to foul the jump shooter, make them make tough shots overview. But I mean, you know, in the mid-range, that's Deja Kelly's bread and butter. And so she's gonna rise over the defense every time and try to knock it down. Didn't look like much contact there, but either way, Jamie Wilson picks up the foul. Also her first. Lattimore stripped by Navarre. Trying to retrieve it back, and who else then? Usby on the floor for the hustle play. Early pass out, and that was deflected out of bounds as Mia Navarre tried to see if she can sneak that one in on the block. Everybody on the UNC coaching staff telling her to just go up with that one, and she kind of got an easy layup in that transition bucket. Plenty of time to work with for the Tar Heels as SB tries to get the screen and Deja Kelly with that chicken wing. <laughs> it calls for the foul. 
Yeah, I mean, they're aggressive. Miami's be guards are being aggressive on the on-ball screens and any actions that she's penetrated in the lane, making sure she, she feels it every single time. Asia Kelly picks up her second personal foul, and that's very interesting because Jasmine Roberts, after she picked up the foul on the baseline against Asia Kelly, that was a conversation that, that she had with the officials. So sometimes you just have to talk you nice have to, to have the a little officials. conversation. Let me pull you aside real quick, have an easy, easy conversation. Back into the zone for the Tar Heels, and another turnover. I think Wilson's saying that was deflected, and it... I seem to agree on that one. She was out in the passing lanes and got the fingertips on it to go out of bounds. Eight turnover for Miami. As you can see, Jaleah Williams checks in the ball game, comes in for Cheyenne Day Wilson. Full court pressure you're seeing from Miami. Coming off of a double-double performance in their upset win over Louisville. And it doesn't look like she's slowing down. Really great composure there. Nice kiss off the glass. One of ten finalists for the Cheryl Miller Award as well for small forwards as another turnover for Miami leads to a look for the Tar Heels. Numbers on this end. Got dang off the glass. Beautiful touch. Katie Myers fired up because of the turnovers leading to easy opportunities for the Tar Heels. And she's got to find a way to limit the turnovers on the offensive end. A 19-point lead over Miami. You would think that it would be a lot different. They have eight new faces on the roster, five of them being freshmen, three transfers as well. And Coach Banghart said the chemistry is just absolutely incredible. They've done a lot with one another in the offseason, a lot of team building. As you can see, a couple of those players that have very impactful minutes for those three transfers. It's a testament to Coach Banghart and her staff of the people that she, they're hand selecting to play with one another. And I'm a firm believer that culture and chemistry and finding joy in your teammate's success, it leads to some important wins. Five on the shot clock for Miami. They've just been hovered. Dwyer outside. How about it? Much needed bucket for Miami. That's one of those that Coach Bingard, I don't even think she said a word. They played excellent defense and forced a tough shot. Dwyer was just able to knock it down. Her second triple of the night. <laughs> Kelly found some st space, pulls up, and when you look at her game, you almost think like, what's the ceiling? If right. there is one. I mean, a freshman coming in here and dominating and commanding her team, that's what you want out of your point guard. But to do it as a freshman, that's a pretty impressive. Renaya Kelly right now, perfect from the field. Eight points in 11 minutes of play. Dwyer sends it out to Patrick, top of the key. As Espy is able to outstretch and pulls down the rebound. That was a good possession by Miami. Penetrated the lane, kicked out for three, just wasn't able to knock it down. Fifth rebound for Usby as Scott Dane waited for a couple of players to move out short on the attempt. You could see more of a pace from Miami in those last couple of possessions, however. Close to a turnover there by Jada Patrick trying to weave in the paint. They do get it back underneath. Plenty of time to work with 22 seconds on the shot clock. Doc Dane checks out for Tar Heels. And Jasmine Roberts comes in. Let's see here. Who was it off of? Ooh. My refs, don't, they don't need to see that replay because they kind of missed one right there. You know what? Sometimes you miss. Yeah. And give it right back. It's been the story of the first half for Miami. Can't score without the basketball as they have now their 10th turnover. Average about 17 a game. 
They're really limiting themselves and scoring opportunities with all of these turnovers, but Miami able to get a turnover of their own. Hopefully that gives them a little bit of energy on the defensive end and string some stops together. Now at seven points in this quarter, they had a total of eight in the first quarter. Outscored 22 to eight. Shot 25% from the field and looking to change that narrative in the second. So Dwyer on the attempt gets fouled and Deja Kelly who spent some time on the bench with the two fouls is going to check back in for the Tar Heels. Man, Dwyer was speeding down the lane. She saw an open gap and she was like, I'm going to attack this, get to the rim and she's going to the free throw line. So Lachey Dwyer will step up to the free throw line, shoots about 58% from the charity stripe, and looking for more offense from her. She had 18 points versus NC State in their previous game. Well, Saturday's ACC Network men's basketball doubleheader begins at 5 Eastern as Georgia Tech takes on Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. Then Syracuse hosts NC State from the JMA Wireless Dome. That's the action taking place on Saturday. Definitely don't want to miss it. Thanks for joining us here for Miami and Tar Heels. Andrew Gray alongside Chelsea Gray on the call as we're approaching the halfway mark of the second quarter. Big time performance by Renata. now in double figures, the only player in double figures in this ball game. And she had a lot of time to get that off. Coach Meyer upset at the ball pressure by Dwyer on that defensive possession. She just doesn't look rushed. There's no pressure like getting to her spots on the floor, so that will have to be an adjustment for Miami. Another short shot clock for the Hurricanes. Hilton working baseline, tried to Euro step, bounces around, and Deja Kelly Close to tracking that one down. Corner three, Hilton. Get off the mark. No reset. Dwyer sends it on the inside and perfectly defended by Key. Picks up the foul there. That's her second personal. More substitutions for Miami right now. Katie Meyer just looking for some type of energy and consistency on the floor right now. Both into the floor. Trying to string together defensive possessions and efficient offensive possessions. It's been a struggle here for Miami in this first half. Deja Kelly, after spending some time on the bench, able to find her way into a bucket, lost the shoe. Either way, the bucket counts. Never lost the shoe and just knocked down a bucket. The problem is she can't get it back on. <laughs> and Miami able to knock down their third triple of the night. So now shooting 33% from the three-point line. Right now, just trying to chip away at that early lead for Carolina. Have I lost the show? I'm not sure. Maybe so. It was such a long time ago. <laughs> I'll check back in after the yeah, it, it, Tate might be dusty at this point. Chelsea, it might be black and white. Who knows? Next time, we gotta, I'm bringing up the tape and see. Angel Gray has lost his shoe and is knocking down a jumper. <laughs> so Ali Stedman picks up the foul there. Three minutes to play in this first half. Deja Kelly so quick getting to the bucket and turns spots on the floor. Another one. If you're watching the tape, you know that is the sweet spot for Deja Kelly. What more can Miami do to just counter that? Force her inside the lane, try something different because they fouled her three times on a pull-up jumper, two of them being to the left. It was a great jumper going to the baseline, but you know she loves her one-two dribble pull-up. 
at that elbow area. She operates so well in that tunnel, just trying to be efficient defensively. Deja Kelly said she has seen a different style herself in these last couple of games, and she had to meditate a couple of times as another three is knocked down. This one coming from Stedman. There's points in the ball game for Stedman that just checked into the ball game. I know North Carolina has put together some really good possessions, and they score in bunches, but Miami only down by 14 points right now in this ball game. They can really shift the energy and momentum going into the second half. As it does, as there's a turnover, a lot of contact. This one going against Tiani Key. Miami doing a great job coming in transition and Seven just running the floor, getting to her spots and was able to knock it down. Allie Stedman, transfer out of Pepperdine, Phoenix, Arizona, the junior. Talked about what it means to that can stretch the floor for you. He would have knocked down the three there. Attempts another one. How about it? Back-to-back -back threes for Allie Stedman. Hit a program record eight threes in her Pepperdine debut. That was back in 2021 and showing it with Miami. Williams pushing the pace. Wilson slows things down with a minute 40 left in the second quarter. Finds a spot on the floor for the three, and Miami string together a couple of threes, now shooting over 40% from the floor. Deja Kelly corner, short, and Williams comes down with a rebound. I just said that, I mean, the days have scored in bunches in this last minute to kind of close the gap going into the second half. And then Coach Katie Meyer was like, well, let's, let's see if we can try this again. Ran a play for her coming off a pin down, and she was able to knock it down from the wing. And to be quite frank, as Renia Kelly turns the ball over to open up the play for second half, she had a couple more looks that didn't fall for her. So she literally had a corner three and a wing three that didn't fall. That could have cut it to single digits for Miami. Duck in underneath, short shot for... Spearman, as that one is finally up. So three different attempts at the rim, and Miami still riding the wave right now, uh, coming in after that really impressive three-minute stretch to finish out the second quarter. Yeah, Spearman came in with some energy, and she missed the start of the second half. She was on the glass, and active defensively, and offensively just getting her hands in there and, and, and able to get some rebounds. I think picks up the foul. That's her second of the night. Spearman has one more on the way. A sophomore out of the queue of Georgia. All-time leading scorer and rebounder. My 
magnet for the Woods as still at the top of the key, and that's the number one thing. We talked about both teams being heavily present on the defensive end, one and two respectively. Miami leading the way in the ACC and scoring defense. Well, that possession, Ryan Kelly was double teamed and nobody in the backcourt to help out. Double screens at the top of the key. Usby trying to sneak it in. Got Dane knowing where she is and is able to finish. Now with seven points. They worked on that exact play and shoot around. They really drilled being able to get into the high-low action after pick and roll coverage from on Miami's end. Uh, Dang had eight points in their previous win. Sitting at seven, Coach Benghar says she wants more from her. Williams at the top of the key is Gay Wilson able to weave on the inside. Beautiful look. Only Spearman was ready for it. And Spearman over the back of Goddane will pick up the foul there. That will be her third. She pats her chest, understanding a couple of things there. Just looking at Day Wilson, too, like for the pass, it was a nice look just off the, off the fingertips. Yeah, if I'm Day Wilson, I'm going to keep attacking those gaps and dropping it off. Because we know she wants to score and able to be aggressive, but that was a nice drop off there by Day Wilson. So Latasha Lattimore checks in, the transfer out of Texas. Brings a lot of defense, but hasn't scored in the last two games. We'll see how they can balance things out on that end. Williams close to jumping the screen there, has the assignment for Deja Kelly. Donarski pulls up, knocks that one down, and continues from her first half play. Now with nine. Yeah, I like her efficiency. She was able to knock down a three, get into the lane, and now she can see another combo move and, and able to get a pull-up jumper. Adamore able to heave that one in or pull that one in and blocked. Usby not having it. Alyssa Usby coming off a career high and blocks as well, had seven. She's just so good defensively. Yeah, she absorbs that contact there, knowing that she wants to get to that right hand for that layup and is able to outstretch her hand and get the block. Full court pressure, Renai Kelly left alone, turns down the three for a better look, got Dang with nine. Good to great, what we call it in Vegas, is you want to pass up a good shot to get a great one. Anytime you can reference Vegas, we understand that's all championship mentality, so keep it coming. Patrick finds Roberts on the back end. So the back side, it was a nice look. That's on Deja Kelly. That's going to be a, third. a little bit of foul trouble there for UNC. But this was a great pass by Renai Kelly. Could have taken that three-point jumper, but Doc Dang had the seal in the lane and able to lay it in. So Deja Kelly having a conversation with Courtney Banger right now, a reminder that she spends a substantial amount of time on the bench in the second quarter because of the two early fouls and Looks like Courtney Banghart is going to keep her on the floor, the trust that she has in her junior. So four points now. She's a junior, and it's, she has one year left, but she's a senior. <laughs> you think how many, how many years do they get? I think a couple of players got six years under their belt. A couple of players were covering on the men's side too. 25 years old. I was still trying to figure out what internship I was going to have. <laughs> wow, how the tide has turned <laughs> as we finish college basketball. Seven on the shot clock. Donarski trying to get some space in between her and Williams. Deja Kelly held up a great defensive series for Miami, and it's going to go back to the Hurricanes with the possession arrow. What do you like about their start on the defensive end in this half? They're really pressuring, making their looks difficult. They're penetrating the lane. They tried that in the first half, but they were losing shooters and, and cutters going into the lane. So I like Miami's intensity. It's still a 10-point lead by UNC, but the feel of the game and how they're playing it just, it just looks and feels a little bit different. And that's what Coach Katie Meyer really wants. Mind you, this is the fourth consecutive game that Miami has played a top 25 team. 
So they've really had a stretch where they've been tested every single night when they take the floor. Turnover there, that was something that they struggled with in the first half. Katie Meyer just wants her team to compete. And that they're going to play hard. They're going to make possessions and, and defend the, the basketball. But are you competing? Are you being smart with your tactics? And that's what she's looking for here with this Miami squad. How about the block by Lattimore Usby? That lane closed very quickly. So Miami averages about four blocks per game. Just one under the Tar Heels. A lot of length and athleticism underneath for both sides as God Dang is having one night for herself. Once again, a nice slot, nice high-low action out of the baseline, out-of-bounds play. You see Usby gets that pass from Deja Kelly and right there, an easy seal by God Dang to just go right up for the layup. The transfer from Boston College spent two years there, was their leading scorer and defender at the single season blocks record as a freshman. And just with each game, just finding so much comfort within this style here in Chapel Hill. Misses the mark there for the three point play, but of course, Alyssa Usby has her back for the rebound. Deja Kelly, pump fake for the three, pulls up mid range, bounces around. Third look for the Tar Heels on this possession. really well, staying in front, and then coming on the offensive end and knocking down the shots. The senior, Lexi Donarski, now with 12 points. So back-to-back -back games for her in double figures. Five on the shot clock. Deep three, no good, and here comes Deja Kelly. Espy with an early deep seal. Gets the ball down low and not rushing her moves at all. Poise letting the cutters happen, seeing the double is coming. And I would assume that Katie Martha will try to get a little bit more disruption when she gets the ball in the paint. Seven points now for us before players and double figures for the Tar Heels. Williams left alone, the three. They've gone cold to start this third quarter. Less than five minutes. Tar Heels on a 7-0 run. Deja Kelly with the rock. Back-to-back -back buckets, can't get that one to fall. Jada Patrick was able to run the floor. He didn't get rewarded there. Top of the key, Jasmine Roberts, and a much different look for Miami from three. The foul will go against the Tar Heels, so they will get it back. They'll step away for the break. Doing all she can on the offensive end. Nice poise and control on this move. A nice lay in. You're right, Angel. We might have to put that on the highlight reel. It's bow time. Get fired up tonight because the run over the last two minutes, and you can see tonight is Jersey night. A couple of the assistant coaches wore their favorite jerseys to shoot around. And how about Coach Banghart rocking the Tar Heel Blue 204? If you want to know the significance of it, well, the combination of all the players on the roster, their numbers, that's what the 204 adds up to. And so you talk about the chemistry earlier in this ball game with the roster. How about even Coach Behar saying, you know what, this team is going to be, and I'm going to rep them and do the best I can for them on the sidelines as well. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I like that. They're really connected. I mean, it starts from the top. And when your head coach is that much involved with the players and making sure that they're all on the same page, it, it really bleeds to the rest of the group. I feel like she can just suit up right now, though. I know that a, a coach as well had a Dartmouth <laughs> jersey for Coach Bangard. Pretty cool. Next time we'll see if we can wear our jerseys on air as well. Yeah. That's a problem. Wait, what jersey would you pick? I was going to say Stedman if she would have hit that three. <laughs> 
which one I will pick. It depends where I'm doing this game at. I think it'll be maybe <laughs> maybe it'll be a, a ruffle some feathers if I wore my Duke jersey in this <laughs> in this building. I think I think you you might be frowned upon. I don't know. <laughs> you know, just a little playful Stand on action. business. <laughs> <laughs> a little playful action there. A legal screen that goes against Renaya Kelly, so that will be a turnover for the Tar Heels. Lazaria Spearman will check back in the ball game, and right now, closing in a four-minute scoring drought for Miami, looking for some points. Earlier in the game, they had a six-minute scoring drought. That was back in the first quarter. It was 22 to eight. How can they counter it this time? The three ball has not gone down for them in this quarter. I think it will be nice if they run a nice pick and roll action high, keep the floor spread, maybe get a nice roller and penetrate into the lane. This handles on the inside by Patrick. Another turnover. Zernai Kelly advances. Numbers. Donarski. Three ball. You can hear the collective awe from the audience as Donarski can't knock that one down. Patrick pulls up for a three. Knocks it down. Nice penetrate. The lane for Shadia Wilson there and able to kick it out to Patrick for the three. Five different players for Miami have knocked down a triple. Stedman outside, lines up, bounces around, nothing there. Spearman able to knock that one down and may get an opportunity to get three the hard way. You know, you have Stedman on the floor. Maybe she doesn't knock that one down, but you have to pay attention to her. They're spreading the floor in that transition bucket, so she shoots this basketball, doesn't get it to go, but Crashing the glass was Patrick and Spearman able to come up with the basketball. And you really like her energy getting to the free throw line, picking up old boards and, and making things happen. Four points right now for Spearman, actually coming off of the game where she scored in double figures off the back iron. Shooting 44% from the free throw line, you start to think about that overall as a team as they're just shooting 61% collectively from the free throw line. Leaving money on the board, Angel, leaving money on the board. Wilson almost used a screen SP. Yeah, she's coming down. She tries to run the lane and just there, right place, right time, and sends it on the baseline. Lisa Usby emphatic on that second block of the night. As we mentioned, coming off her career high seven against Louisville. Less than two minutes of play in this third quarter. Carolina edging Miami in the third by two, 13 to 11. With. It's going to have to be a heave and a baseline foot. A foot on the baseline will be another turnover. That's the 15. Now, we talked about it as a team. Miami averages about 17 turnovers a game. Yeah, already at 15. Those are some possessions I know they wish they could get back. Take a look at it, these stats here. The points in the paint has been a little bit of a battle. 20 points by UNC to Miami's 10. And that's something that I know Coach Katie Meyer doesn't like seeing. Second chance opportunities for the Tar Heels. Donarski can't knock it down. And how about this? Five straight games that Miami has outscored their opponents with points in the paint, and it is not that case as Carolina has doubled them 20 to 10 in this one to this point. Taking them a while to get set up in their half court set. Tim left wire asking for the top screen. Bounce pass at the feet of Spearman and another turnover. And those possessions. It's running down the shot clock, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, trying to make things happen. They have to be efficient late in the shot clock. Yeah. 
Less than a minute to play in the third. Stedman almost poked that one away. A little bit aggressive at the top of the key by Dwyer as Deja Kelly is fouled and Dwyer is gonna pick up her first. of a frustration foul right there and maybe reset her focus and try to get a stop on this possession. So the next foul by Miami will put Carolina at the free throw line. And they'll be in the bonus. Miami already in the bonus on their end. 30 seconds to work with. Nine on the shot clock. So another foul there and a stop. It should be free throws coming up. They're setting up on the sideline. It's actually four, so the next one will put them on the free throw line. A little bit of a change here. Williams guarding Deja Kelly to end this third quarter. Deja Kelly might have gotten away with a bit of a hook there. You can see the pressure by Williams. Yeah, I really liked her defense there in that possession. Deja Kelly penetrating the lane, trying to make something happen on this offensive end. And credit De Deja Kelly being able to handle the pressure, though. Getting to her spots on the floor, poised, knowing when to attack as well with a short shot clock. Well, stick around Friday night. Duels are back for the next five weeks. We'll have a conference matchup right here on the ACC Network tomorrow night at 7 Eastern. NC State, Pittsburgh at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Five seconds, Dwyer. Looking for help. High looks, Beerman had nowhere to look. And that will do it for the third quarter. Three down, one to go. Carolina in charge with the heavy lead, 52 to 39 of the Hurricanes. The men, but defensively making their looks very difficult in that ball game. And they're trying to say see the same thing in the fourth quarter. Anyway, Navarre might have had that partially blocked as Poole. Couldn't get the angle on that layup. So even with the lead, the Tar Heels have not knocked down a shot in the last five minutes of play. And that's just going back to the end of the third quarter. Stedman seeing a lot more attention on the defensive end as Dwyer finds the bottom of the net on that one. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication for the Tar Heels on that defensive possession, and Dwyer made him pay. And it counted one of her threes for a long two, just her second three of the night. Dwyer with seven, as we mentioned. So a bucket goes down. Alyssa Usby gets the bucket there. Now nine points. Alyssa Usby with seven rebounds, nine points. Coming off of a double-double already has nine. Yeah, I think she's going to get it this game as well. Dwyer going at Usby. Now eight. Dishes it out. India Navarre didn't like the look from outside. How about the attention Osa Usby is garnering underneath? A double box out on Usby as India Navarre able to take the contact underneath. Looks like this one will go against Ali Stedman. If that does hold, that will be her third personal. Very heads up play by Alyssa Usby. She wasn't able in the position to grab the rebound, so she tipped it to her teammate, and she was able to get that old board and, and go for a layup. Short on the first one. Now we talked about it in the first half. I mean, no game is one that you don't want to miss in the ACC. Is right now coming into this ballgame, North Carolina Syracuse actually tied for first 
coming into the game in conference play. Syracuse getting the win now 7-1. and one. If North Carolina can hold on to this win, we'll also be 7-1. and one, But a lot of movement that we're going to see as a couple of teams were, were ranked taking losses. ACC play is just so strong. I talk about this all the time. It's, it's conference. There's a lot of parity no matter who you're playing. Had the most teams in the NCAA tournament last season with eight. Miami being one of those teams that was able to make it as well to the Elite Eight, their program first. Just a couple of buckets away, actually, from getting to their first Final Four. Austin Greenville, two against LSU. Carolina, another NCAA team. Finished 22 and 11 last year, 11 and 7 in the ACC as a turnover for Miami. Spearman can hold on to that one. Deja Kelly was looking for some help underneath. Now their own number. Nice ball movement for Miami. Leads to the triple. Some of their best offenses happen in transition or their secondary flow offense where they're able to penetrate the lane, hit shooters for threes, or they're going into the lane and get a, get a foul and go to the free throw line. There are three players from Miami that have two threes already in this game. That's Patrick Dwyer and Stedman. Patrick, the only player for Miami in double figures, though, with 10. She has six rebounds to add to that stat line. Dwyer working on the inside. Spearman able to clean that one up. Spearman has been at the right right place at the right time often in this game. It's a single digit ball game. So cut to eight being down as many as 19. Miami outscoring them right now. Eight to three in the fourth quarter. A couple of substitutions on the way for uh, North Carolina. Deja Kelly working herself to the rim and just one of the toughest players, not just in the ACC, but in the country. 14 points for Deja Kelly and can be in rare air if she gets back to that 20 point mark. Day Wilson, top of the key, three, count it. Nice penetration there by Stedman. The double came and she was able to hit Day Wilson for the three. 10 triples for Miami, keeping them in this ball game. Only down seven, down as many as 19. Cheyenne Day Wilson saying, call my name and I got gotcha. you. Tar Heels up by seven, 5.33 left in this ball game. Here's the game summary on the left side of your screen. For Carolina, it's really, we talked about how things were done by committee for Miami. How about them with four players in double figures? But Jake Patrick, the only hurricane in double figures, but it's been evenly dispersed for them, knocking down triples. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to how they've been able to be efficient in that area. Every time you think UNC is going to break the game open, Miami comes back with a run of their own, knocking down threes, getting to the lane, or getting to the free throw line. 10-3, shooting 40% from the three-point line, Miami. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster for the Hurricanes in this one. Scored just eight points in the first quarter. Outscored the Tar Heels in the second, down in the third, and here they are, just down seven. And the final frame of this basketball game is Dave Wilson actually was the last one to hit that one, so we'll stay with the Tar Heels. Before that break, Maria Gacting and Renaya Kelly check back in. So we'll see if they can change things around. As they spend about three minutes on the bench. Deep seal. Gacting going at Spearman. I don't know what more you can want from Maria Gacting right now with 13 points. Owning the paint. Yeah, Bangkart really called her Swept her into the ball game and going right to her in the paint. Patrick not hesitating at all.
Renaya Kelly looking up the floor, surveying, finding Usby. Everyone crashing the boards for Miami. The dish today, Wilson, she pulls up. Three ball, another one for Miami. Make it 11. And we have a six point ball game here, Angel. It's turning to be a good one here at UNC. Must be able to get another possession. Actually stepped on the baseline, seems like. So what a run for Miami. Just down six, less than four minutes ago. Don't go anywhere. We got a good one on our hands. If you love to travel, Capital One has a rewards for all better off with an ally. The Kellys are in the building. Renaya Kelly and Deja Kelly have been on fire in double figures. Renaya Kelly with 10, Deja with 14. They are wanting to see a little bit more of that to close out this fourth quarter with a little under four minutes to play. How would you grade their performance to this point? I really would grade it an A. They've been pretty efficient and picking their spots where they want to shoot the basketball. I haven't really seen too many big times or possessions where I'm like, ah, that might have not have been a great shot. They've gotten good attempts at the rim as well. On the other side for Miami, this is the closest it's been since 38 to 32 lead back in the third quarter. So pulling it into six points, Miami has tied their season high for threes, have 11 at Stedman with seven seconds to work with. Dwyer held up by Renaya Kelly. The floater in and out. Nothing there. Goes to the Tar Heels. How about the defense by Renaya Kelly on that one? Dwyer tried everything to get to some type of space on the floor. Let's see what the Tar Heels run in this possession. One and a good shot on goal. Dwyer actually tried to go for the steal there. It was deflected for a short spell, and Deja Kelly's still able to pull that one in. So the foul will go to Dwyer. That will be her third. So two players for Miami with three. That's Dwyer and Stedman. The only player with three fouls for North Carolina is Deja Kelly. Everyone else with two or less. Deja Kelly. Miami trying to get back-to-back -back upsets in conference play. Patrick, excuse me, Jasmine Roberts. That was Patrick before the missed three from the wing. Tar Heels trying to work some of that clock. They're approaching the two-minute mark. Yeah, time to score, and time is on your side. Get a good possession and maybe shoot it with three seconds left on the shot clock. A speed with four on the shot clock. Wow! <laughs> Alyssa Usby now in double figures, and this is the first time North Carolina has had five players in double figures in ACC play. Yeah, nice drive by here with the shot clock running down. She really hangs in the air and able to finish that with a little bit of contact there on a rotation by Spearman, and she gets herself to the free throw line. Nesby knocks down the free throw, so 12 points for her now. As we mentioned, the first time they've had five players in double figures in ACC play this season, less than two minutes to play in the ball game. Yeah, I like that step back a little group, moving and grooving with the step back, snatch back, and able to get her feet behind the line and knock down the three-point shot. 15 points for Day Wilson, five triples on the night. Donarski couldn't respond. Got dang, almost had an attempt at the rim, but Dwyer swiped in. 
who will go to Miami, a big defensive stop for Miami, especially with Dwyer coming in. Yeah, let's see what they do this possession. I would just spread the court and maybe get into a pick and roll action with Dave Wilson and maybe Spearman. Two possession ball game. Approaching the one minute mark. So Katie Meyer didn't like what she was seeing developing from Miami. We'll take the timeout. A minute and five left in the ball game. Now you did talk about what they needed at this point. Go for the three, look for the best shot. What's the conversation do you think right now for Miami? I think you go for the best shot possible. I mean, a lot of times that's been the three point shot by Dave Wilson or by Patrick's, but I, I would try to spread the court. You have 14 seconds, plenty of time to get a good look at the basket. Miami with a season high 12 three. So that is always an option for them. Yeah, after the game tonight, the Nothing But Net crew will break down the night in the ACC. They'll have highlights and analysis of every women's matchup. Look ahead at the best games coming up on the schedule. That's a tough task. Every game is so good right now in the ACC. It's been so much fun to watch different games to start ACC play, the different upsets, big performances. Players making a name for themselves. A minute left. I mean, she was doing a dribbling clinic at the top of the key and was able to get into the lane. Left hand, off hand, high off the glass. That's what we call a level three finish up high above the square. Able to get the layup to go and get three points or try to get three points the old fashioned way. Knocks it down. This is the closest it's been since the first quarter as we have a substitution, Julia Williams will check in as Allie Stedman might see some offense defense for Miami. Full court press as Usby held up and a timeout will be called for the Tar Heels. Supporting Banghart hits the timeout there. The full court pressure as we were expecting from Miami. It's one of those things too, Chelsea, if, you, if you're understanding the time on the clock and after a made bucket for Miami, what they do after those makes. So the person taking the ball out even can kind of wait because if you call that timeout, you can advance it before in putting it in bounds. Yeah, that, that, that's a moment there. That's maybe a teaching moment when you go back and, and, and film for, uh, for Coach Bankhart of just wait, have your composure, let me see your poise and let's get the ball in bounds efficiently. Now we're starting to look at the reset of the ball game. Miami has three fouls to give and three fouls and Tar Heels with one. Timeouts, Miami has one left. Tar Heels have two. Making sure the floor is safe for both parties. Deja Kelly, no need to foul here. Just a one possession game. Miami was down as many as 19. Can they pull off the upset? Dwyer with the mishandle by Kelly. Free all the way, it cuts it to one. Defense, you're looking at the ACC leading team in Miami gets the nice stop at the top of the key. One point game, 28.5 left. And a timeout for the Tar Heels. Man, she was just sitting, waiting for that crossover to happen just to get a hand on it. Very efficient, very patient, able to get that layup. Got Dane was trailing, trying to get that block, but just too fast, too speedy to get up the court for that layup. Dwyer with the cookies and milk on the other end. 
Nice look for Dwyer. Seventh in the conference in steals. Gets him almost two steals per game. And that was a huge one. Yeah, you saw in the fourth quarter, there was a few possessions where she's sitting down. She got a little bit of the fouls and, and got a little bit of aggressive on ball, but she was just waiting and for her moment to be able to steal the basketball. Now with the timeout, they are able to advance this one. One timeout left for both teams. The shot clock is off, 28.5 left. Now you start looking at who they should foul. With Deja Kelly, you don't want the time to go out. Williams at the top of the key, takes the foul there. So the next one will put the Tar Heels at the free throw line. Backcourt, they have to try and figure out how to get a quick foul. Went for the steal. And a lot of time went off the clock at that point. Deja Kelly just shooting 67% from the free throw line this season. But in the last few games, she has been very impressive. 31 for 36 from the free throw line in the last two. And third nationally in free throw attempts. Four for six tonight and build on it. You see RJ Davis in the building. A star for the men's basketball team. Also leading the ACC in scoring on the men's side. A little inconspicuous there. Deja Kelly knocks that one down. Let's see what Katie Meyer draws up here to possibly take a three in this possession. 15.7 is still a lot of time. If they can get a quick score, I'm taking the easy score. Because if only three to five seconds comes off the shot clock, that gives plenty of time to foul and to draw up another play. And then have a discussion about that as well as they call their final timeout. So the Tar Heels do have one remaining. The two free throws knocked down by Deja Kelly. Huge for them. Making it a three-point ball game. As we talked about Miami from the three-point line. If you can get, as you mentioned, a look at the rim, take it. But they have 12 threes on the night. Yeah, if Miami does not have any timeouts, so therefore I'm drawing this play for this possession, but I'm also talking about, okay, if we don't get the score or if we get a layup, what are we doing in the following defensive possession? In the possession after that, you're coming back on offense. You're going for the three. What kind of action do you want coming down court? Also to consider, the Tar Heels have three fouls to give. The bonus, 15 seconds left, and this has been such a fun game. After we saw the start, Miami down as many as 19, and just a different look, a, a more intense look from them defensively, you would say? Yeah, very intentional in their defensive presence and offensively being able to get into the lane and kick out for threes. Day Wilson, Patrick, Spearman, Dwyer, and Stedman on the floor for Miami. Three players have two threes already on the night. Dwyer gets freed up in a foul. We called against the Tar Heels, as we mentioned. They do have three to give, now two. So Maria Gacting picks up the foul there. That's four. Spearman. And another foul. So not a lot of time going off the clock, but you can see them trying to develop something off of the screen on the wings. Yeah. They're, insert, they're inputting the ball with Spearman and maybe going into a handoff or some sort of action coming back into the tunnel. We're going to have a pause of play, too, because Maria Gacting just picks up her fifth, so she will foul out of the ball game with India Navarre checking in. So now us be on Spearman that switches things around a little bit for the matchups. Spearman once again. 
once again, trying to get it up top. Reminder, no timeouts for Miami. Gets a look at the rim. Short and actually will get actually an offensive foul. Indiana Navarre checks into the ball game. And in two seconds has one of the biggest defensive stops for the Tar Heels all night. That's the trust that Coach Banghart has in her players there for the rotation, ready to draw the charge. And not only that, picks up her fifth foul. So now fouls out of the ball game. Mm, she's in the restricted area, so I don't know about that call. But we know that there's no restriction area rules, so that's the moment where our, some of these rules come into play in a key moment. Down the stretch. It has gone back and forth. The Tar Heels have been able to hold on to this lead. They've not trailed in this ball game. Largest lead, 35 to 16. As Deja Kelly can seal this one at the free throw line. Now a two possession game. 17 points for Deja Kelly. 